Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, the comedians that perform here, and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what helps make up our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Dawn Davis Walmack. Hello, laughers. I'm excited to introduce you to Ryan Clark Slocum. Ryan is an active DJ, producer, videographer, and educator based in Harrisonburg, Virginia. He has a background in improvisation, piano, turntablism that fuels his creativity to balance recording and producing. He collaborates with other talented artists to create unique audio and visual projects in our beautiful Shenandoah Valley. With over eight years of experience and having performed at more than 550 events, you can hire Ryan to DJ. DJ and he'll turn it up to make your next wedding or event memorable and fun. Welcome to the show, Ryan. It's great to have you on here today. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. People will have missed our take five or six. I did there because our sound guy is going to edit that out. So if it shows up on your video you put out there, oh my. <laughs> no, it was, it was all the hiccups are beautiful too. Uh, hiccups are beautiful. We learn from our mistakes, don't we? And just grow, grow like gangbusters if we choose to. Correct? Yeah, yeah I think so too. Well, this is this really is exciting to be talking to you today. You have many, 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 many talents. How does one become a G DJ and multi-dimensional artist such as yourself? Can you tell us your story? Yeah, so I have only had one life that I'm aware of right now. And so I can tell you a little bit about that. That, And yeah, I was born in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and I was able to have two older brothers and a younger sister when I grew up. And I was able to learn how to play the piano a little bit when I was younger. And then that led to me teaching myself um, just more via YouTube and pop songs that I liked on the piano. And then that led to me taking some of my parents' records and um, making, starting to make beats when I was in high school and passing out beat CDs and little mixtapes when I was uh, at Harrisonburg High School. And then, yeah, then that led me into um, DJing when I was at James Madison University um, and then throughout that, I was still creating and making music. And then, yeah, ever since 2014, I have been DJing as my main gig. And I only DJ a couple times a week. So during the other times of the week, that allowed me to explore my other passions and my other creative outlets via recording or writing. And um, I was able to connect with some of the local youth and local um, schools and organizations like on the road collaborative um, to to yeah to just share my own experience and connect with people and so yeah I have one particular story um, and I think what I try to do is use that to encourage others and inspire others and try to like see the potential and reflect potential in other people. When you say particular story, what do you mean by that? You have one particular story. Just, yeah. Just that I'm only one person. I got you. And, okay. Yeah, and just that my story is very, um, yeah, unique to me. And I think there's probably a million different ways that um, one could, explore um their own creativity and um yeah so for me djing happened to be one of the bigger and main outlets for me um and i think part of that was going up to new york and seeing and experiencing some of the best djs in the world and just coming back home being fairly humbled and saying <laughs> i got a lot of work to do and um yeah kind of put things into perspective for me when, and still used to do so yeah. yeah when was the new york trip and what it was the name of that event 
So I started going up to New York City in 2012. Um, I had been there a few times when I was a kid, um, but my first somewhat more extensive stay for a couple months was in 2012, um, where I was able to intern at a record label and um, experience these uh, tools of war park jams is what they were called um, in the Bronx, in Harlem. Um, and yeah, I just met some incredible people there and just like really just absorbed what I was, where I was and what was happening. And um, yeah, since then, I the next summer I went back up and started um, working more with the the people that were doing the the media and the the video uh, productions for those events. And so that I was then able to PA and be a runner and do things for uh, Summer Stage, the Central Park um, series. I think that was probably summer of 2013. And yeah, just kind of ever since graduating, I had gone back and forth up from there. And um, yeah, kind of that's always been with me and has played a part in what I do now. That's really amazing. See, I knew this was going to be incredible. I had no idea that was part of your story. That's lovely. Your parents, I'm curious, their albums that you chose to, uh, I don't know, turntable or what's the word? What's right. the phrase? What, what's, what is it that you do with that? What's it called? At the time, <laughs> at the time, what I was doing was I took, I think they had one or two crates of records that they had held on to and they, they didn't really play any longer. Um, okay. And so I bought myself a turntable and a, and a mixer. And then what I was doing was taking pieces from these records and trying to uh, manipulate them and interpret, interpret them and sample them um, to make my own beats. And some of which were really bad. And some of <laughs> my friends really always still talk to me about. So, <laughs> So yeah, it was it was a it was a good experience for sure. What were the albums they owned that they weren't listening to anymore? Do you remember? I mean, they were, I remember there's some Michael Jackson in there. There was Doobie Brothers, Jackson Brown, Billy Joel, um, Average White Band, um, just a lot of different stuff. Um, and yeah, that just made me want to go buy my own. So that's when I started going downtown in Harrisonburg looking for records and old, like the old house furniture or yeah. um, different places that I would just started, started collecting and amassing my own uh, vinyl collection too. That's really cool, Ryan. Yeah. We, you know, we know you as Ryan Slocum, our son, Landon Turner, you went to high school with him at Harrisonburg high school. Where does the Ryan Clark come from? So that was Clark, I believe, was my grandmother's on my mother's side's maiden name. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, and that's just been my middle name. And when I started to DJ, that was just kind of what I went with. It was just kind of short. And um, Ryan Clark is really what it's been. And some people throw the DJ in front of it. Some people just do Ryan Clark. Um, and I also really do like my last name of Slocum. Um, I was just visiting the Slocum side of the family last week in um, New York, um, in the Rochester area. Um, and my, my dad's from Scottsville, New York. And he, yeah, so there's a lot of Slocum family history that I really appreciate. So uh, I'm not opposed to whichever combination of words are used to describe me or call me out. So yeah. Yeah, you'll answer to any of them. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad unless unless it's unless you're being mean, and then <laughs> then then that's not good. <laughs> that's good. What is it that you love the most about being an artist? I like um, space. I I've, ever since I was a kid, I've just always liked to be alone, and I've liked my own space. Um, and I mean, even if I'm in a group of people, sometimes I just get lost in my own head and um, I kind of seek like refuge there. Like I like 
I I feel comfortable in my own head. There's a lot of weird things that are bouncing around up there. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've just, I just really appreciate space. And I think creativity and expression really is about that. Um, it's like feeling like you have space and then doing something with it. That's really neat. Yeah, you have such an extraordinary breadth of experience with these multi dimensions. One of the things we're curious about this is my husband's question, by the way. Uh, this is more on the DJ end of things. What are some recent technological innovations that have happened that non DJs wouldn't know about? Oh, man. I th- I feel like there, yeah, there's still so many things that are happening. One that comes to mind is um, AI artists. Um, there's, there's really AI, there's AI entities that I believe will um, soon be um, having soon have Billboard charting songs. Are you kidding me right now? No, I I think that's going to happen. And I would love to, I would really love to collaborate with something like that. Oh my gosh. So artificial intelligence is creating music. If I heard this correct. Yeah, I I believe I'm not super, I'm not super, super deep into it. Okay. Uh, But there are some things that I follow that are really exciting. Um can you uh, share one of those with us that you're following? That's so exciting. Honestly, not at the moment. Like I okay. couldn't, but I, I just, there are different, um, there's, yeah, there's just like the way music and tech are moving and also now um, collaborating and just like intertwining is super, super exciting to me. Um mm-hmm. And I think, too, another trend that I see um, is artists being um, self-sustaining and not um, necessarily needing any sort of um, gatekeeper or middleman to what they're doing to reach their audience. Now things, the direct-to-consumer, I guess, and... um, model is super interesting to me and also i've seen a lot more especially over the last year a lot more artists forming and um collaborating with what may they may have used to think of as just their fans are now more of like feedback people and like people that other creatives and like other people that they're building community with and to me that is really exciting and has informed how I think about my art because, um, yeah, I really, in terms of my process, I really want to invite other people in and not make it this like, ooh, I'm artsy and I do art and this is a statement <laughs> and I'm like holier than thou kind of Right. Thing. So, yeah. Creating some community with people that have like interests, both fans and other artists, it sounds like. So what kind of feedback right. would they give? They like, all... Oh, I like the speed. I don't know. I like the tune or beat of that. What would be an right. example of feedback that would come through in the, in that format or in that cli- kind of collaboration? Yeah, I think um, what I appreciate is the kind of the variety of feedback that I do receive because I'll get feedback from people that may not necessarily make music or um, or anything like that. And then I'll get feedback from the people that are like super technical and like, are like, you should turn the piano down a little bit. You should mm. put this effect on this thing and you should do this. And I almost, I don't know, sometimes I almost gravitate towards the feedback that I get from people that aren't as... Um, Music savvy. <laughs> yeah, just because, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's easier for me that way or what, but... Um, yeah, just one thing in particular, lately I've just been thinking about putting out songs that are like half a minute long or 47 seconds or whatnot. And uh, I think there is this like, oh yeah, people's attention spans are shorter now and like this is the end of the world. But I think it's also just like part of how technology is changing. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, 
the things that we're making with technology changing as well. I think those things kind of should go hand in hand. Yeah, I think so too. That's that's really interesting. So where are you doing this collaborative with the community that's out there direct to consumer? For you, is that on TikTok or is you have YouTube or social media? How do you how do you connect with the community at large? Yeah, right now um I've mostly done like just a lot of text messaging and um Instagram and all of these different platforms. And I want to explore more though uh, around, um, yeah, just different forms of um, connecting with others, whether it's a Discord channel or a, um, like a subscriber model, a subscription model for what I do. Um, whereas like, you know, people, I think what's gonna happen more and more is there's there's people that subscribe to Spotify for X amount of dollars a month I think more and more, though, people will start to subscribe to an artist and someone that they really like, like, and just be like, "Oh yeah, I really like this artist. How can I support them?" And also, there's more things happening now where the people that are supporting the artists are actually um, uh, getting getting stake and have some mm-hmm. can have some sort of ownership in what's being created too. So there's a lot of um, things that are happening within that space. And that kind of gets into the the NFTs and a lot of that stuff that I, again, don't really know a ton about, um, but am interested in the evolution of. What does NFT stand for? I think it's a non-fungible token. Okay. All right. Um, and that and that's how that works, the money exchange in this new innovative format that's trending. Right. Yeah. I okay. recently saw I recently saw something that popped up called a Stoey, a song that owns itself. And <laughs> okay. they invited people in to take ownership of the song. Um and yeah, kind of yeah, again, I don't know a ton about it, um, but, <laughs> but it's a trend that's happening at your. Yeah, aware there's a of. lot. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more. That's a lot. A lot of things that are happening around art and how we consume it, and how I think we're starting to reevaluate how we value it. Yes, how we value it, how we're paying for it, how we're getting to it, and yeah. now fans are becoming influencers for the artists through social media platforms. We are in the middle of an evolution for sure. It's a revolution, evolution. It is exciting. I want to ask then, who are your biggest creative influences? Sure. Um, First person that pops up to me is Pharrell Williams. Oh, yes, Pharrell. I like him too. Here we go. And yeah, um, yeah, a I, ton. I Stevie Wonder. Um, nice. Yeah, just and this um, dude, Labby Sifre, is an amazing songwriter. Is he? Um, I don't even know that one. Okay. And yeah, I'll send you some of his stuff. And please do. Yeah, just lately. I mean, there's there's so much great music that's coming out now. It's um, yeah, it's super inspiring and. I'm just, yeah, I think it's just a super interesting time. It is. You work with a lot of artists and rappers. When you work with them, what is your role in the process? Yeah. um, So I've done, I've produced a couple, um, I fully produce a couple different projects and mixtapes and um, in collaboration with other artists. And I think that, I don't know if you were to ask me this a couple of years ago, I might have said one thing. And I think what I would say now is to create space for something to happen. Um, Organically. And, yeah. And just yeah. to get it out of the way. Mm. Um, especially, yeah, especially when it's collaborating with an artist where I'm just um, the producer and like they're the one writing all the lyrics and they're the one performing and like telling their stories over instrumentals that I may have um, helped out with. Um, and yeah, it's really to, 
I think my job is just to be a mirror and to reflect whatever is happening for them at that time. And, and yeah, I, I, I just, I just really think it's important to, to encourage people and to, to remind people of their strengths and to be, and to be able to reframe their weaknesses as opportunities and things to work on instead of things to beat yourself up of about and then get in your head about really. Mm, like a director almost too. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. It, sometimes it, um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, and yeah, just in general, even if I'm just talking to someone and I'm not really like collaborating on anything with that's, that's usually what I, I go to is like, Oh, what did you say? Like the thing <laughs> that is like really special about them that they might just say very quickly and then try to change the subject about is usually sometimes I'm like, that's the amazing thing about you. Uh, to share with people in their music yeah. and what they're writing and produce or creating. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's so okay. many things to explore and so many important stories out there um, that, yeah, I mean, I can only do so much and produce so much. And I really want to encourage other people to try to produce themselves and to think about how they can be more resourceful in their own um endeavors because i think that's a big part of creativity is resourcefulness resourcefulness what do you mean by that exactly resourcefulness to to use what you have and to um, do what you can with it um yeah i mean if you have a laptop you have a you have if you have a laptop that works like in, compared to 20, 30 years ago, there's a lot of, a lot of things you can do with it. And it's like a laptops nowadays are like complete studios in a way. So. Yeah. Okay. So helping them take the the tools that they have and create something even more creative based on what the talents they have and what's available to them and what's going to help them shine even more than they already are. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think too, yeah, just, um, prioritizing the process and having patience with yourself is super important as an artist. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've begun to learn that myself. And I, I think, um, yeah, even just over the last year, I've definitely been like, Oh, okay. So I can like pace myself and focus on my own thing. And yeah. And in a way, sometimes I was always kind of like looking everywhere else to do something and collaborate. And now I've realized that working on my own thing is sometimes and most of the times the best thing that I can do. Yeah. Very rewarding and fulfilling that way. I can relate to that. You know, yeah. this whole COVID thing has helped in a way helped everybody to kind of reevaluate their life and what am I doing and mm -hmm. you know, what's important to me and, what are what where have you know for me i'm a faith-based person so where has god put me mm. and how can you bloom right where you're planted mm. you know so yeah, I love that. yeah right so you know going all over the place and now focusing in on how can we bring as much laughter to the valley as we can and how can we connect people that live in the valley and outside the valley with the beautiful people that mm. live here in this beautiful part of the country and that's why we're on this podcast talking to you right. <laughs> yeah which is fantastic i i want to ask this question i i really can't wait to ask it maybe i should have started with it but i'm really curious to find this out if you could eternally be stuck in one year's music scene which year would it be Hmm. I know, and he's thinking, and he's thinking. I think that a I don't want to be corny, but I I honestly can't really pick a, a year in the past. I would either say ten years from now, what? or this year. Really? Now, why would you say that? Um, just because 
I haven't done enough research in about the past to really give you a specific year. Okay. There. And yeah. And then also just, I don't know, maybe like when someone made whatever year it was when someone created like the first drum or something. Oh, that would be cool. I wonder when that was. Right. Or yeah. yeah, Or just, I don't know. I think this year is super interesting. If you just like look around, like there's, there's a lot um, happening and yeah, it's a moment right now. It is. I think it is too. And I think that your answer really lends to the essence of who you are, which is a creator. So it makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. You would want to look to the future because that's going to be created. That's, right. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that a lot. That's really cool. Now, my husband and I have been to a wedding. You DJed for Trisha and Tanner Johnson. Nice. And for the Laffords, yes. And for the Laffords out there. That might have been the best one yet. Oh, I, I, I yeah. Still have, I still have yet to top. Um, yeah, all of us d- dancing to DMX. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. And Lavers, you might remember Tanner Johnson was on uh, this podcast, episode 15, because he and his brothers run Pure Shenandoah, which is a CBD and hemp oil business here in the Valley. So if you missed it, you should go back and check that one out. But that was definitely something to be remembered. It was a blast. You were incredible. Everyone was dancing their buns off. Uh, we need to know when you're hired as a DJ for a wedding or event, what's your process there? Do you get a playlist and bust it out or how does all that work? How does Ryan do it? Sure. Yeah. So I started DJing in 2012 and since then um, I've DJed ever since and I've played over 550 gigs of all different sorts. Um, So yeah, I do DJ and yeah, weddings are one thing that I do within that. And so every event's different. Um, sometimes it'll be a hip hop show where I'm I'm playing instrumentals for other artists to perform over, um, which I've done a good bit of. Um, I've done a lot of just club DJing, uh, where it's just basically me just having a free form set playing whatever I want. Um, and then also, yeah, there's weddings where I will really just try to invite people in and um, be open to what their tastes are and what their um, preferences are and then kind of use that and combine it with what I do and what I already know and really just yeah reflect the energy of the moment is what my job is. I look at DJing as an art and a service as one thing um and yeah so i just try to balance that and really just reflect um the energy of the crowd and if there's if the crowd's in a really really bad mood and they're they've decided to be in a really bad mood for the whole evening sometimes it's hard to pull them out of that but sometimes you can and um but other times yeah such as i don't know when that was that wedding but uh right a few years ago i think now. yeah that was um, that was just like a huge celebration, and the energy reflected re- that. Yes, yeah, so it was really high. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, so yeah. I, I, I again, what if I'm producing with an artist or collaborating with someone or DJing? That's kind of I see them very similarly in that I just want to reflect what's already there. That's really good. I like that. I've listened to some of your songs on your website's homepage. You have Mothership, Toxic Man, Take Care, Get Lost, all on SoundCloud. They are amazing, by the way. I don't know anything about music, but to me, it sounded like they were all made in a Nashville or Hollywood studio somewhere by the greats. I mean, wow. Yes, you are welcome. It was really, I was, listen, I didn't know Ryan. (laughs) I was, it was <laughs> this guy DJing, DJing for eight, nine years, and now he starts to try to make music. I don't know how this is going to go. 
yeah, I was researching this. So I'm like, all right, I'll play it. And then uh, we're in the car. Co- yeah, we're in the car. And my husband and I looked at each other, you know, just silently looked at each other and just nodding our head going, all right, Ryan. <laughs> That's awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Mothership is listed as a track and the other three are saying they're solo drops. Right. Uh, yeah. They're, yeah. They're yeah. Kind of, kind of they're all solo drops and tracks okay yeah this is good because here's the thing people in the music industry they understand this lingo but i'm not in it and i'm sure a few other laughers aren't either i mean can you just tell us more about the lingo there what's going on with all that yes please educate us yeah so i've again i've been djing for eight nine years um and yeah i've always made beats and handed out beat cds and mixtapes and then um like six seven years ago i started to write my own stuff over my own instrumentals so it was like oh i can kind of produce myself and then um yeah i had put stuff out on soundcloud and um things like that in the past and put out a uh a, a rap project i think in like 2018 which is like seven songs um so that was like one of my first more intentional experiments with um releasing my own stuff and then um yeah march of 2020 um kind of forced my hand at looking at what i've been doing and what i had been writing and allowed me to um record a lot more and organize a lot more uh organize my studio um and so yeah even for this year 2021 i set a goal for myself uh of releasing 30 songs of my own whoa and so yeah so that most of those that you mentioned except for get lost which i put out last year uh have come out this year um and yeah it's so i'm a i'm making these songs for the most part by myself um in my basement in harrisonburg virginia and yeah so that's one thing (laughs) and and so yeah it's not in any sort of studio elsewhere it's um me using what i have here um and just yeah having produced and collaborated with so many people over the last couple years i've learned more along the technical aspects of like mixing and production and uh different things which i still think i'm very 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 new at um so i'm excited to see what happens next um but yeah those are just like songs that i made and that i were moments really um that i captured and now i've just been experimenting beyond that how to share them and i'm i'm experimenting not only with my music but and how i share my music um whether that goes into the artwork or the videos or uh yeah social media and all that kind of stuff around it um or like inviting people to remix certain songs, etc. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. And yeah, that's like, you can tell that that's what I really, really get excited about. That's what I'm on my way home from a gig. That's what I'm doing on my way home is going over those songs that I've been writing or um, things like that. So yeah, I could go on and on about it. Yes. Okay. A couple of things in there. So track and solo just for lingo. That's that's one and the same, an interchangeable term. For the most part, yeah. Like uh, audi- sometimes I'll say, oh, I'm releasing an audio track, um, okay. which is like when it'll go up on SoundCloud and Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff. Um, and I say that sometimes, maybe for myself or maybe for other people, um, because I've started to try to look at my art as more than just a audio experience. Um, so yeah, there's a lot that's going on there. Cause I've always made videos too, ever since I was a kid and got a hold of my, again, my parents old something. It was their camcorder this time, but, um, yeah, I've always experimented with video all through high school and, and beyond. Um, so yeah, trying to like blend those two things, audio and video, um, has been a super super fun um, happening for me as well. You're like the MTV channel of 2021. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying my yeah. best to be like a self-contained and self-managed creative entity. Yeah. Yeah. So the voice on all of those, including mothership, that's you. That's me. So yeah. Um, shout out um, my recording software and my microphones and a little bit of auto tune because I've never thought of myself as like a vocalist or a singer. And if anything, I think recording and being able to has actually informed myself and my own confidence in way other parts of my life and many other parts of my life. Um, for instance, like with, with like just this auto tune plugin, which helps pitch correct your voice a little bit. So if you're like a little flat on a note, it'll kind of bump you up, um, or down. And so that's, that's kind of really helped me and like allowed me to kind of get ideas out and think less, which is another part of what I try to do in my process is think less and just make more. Mm, get out of your own way. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So. I like it. Yeah. That's listen, listen, laughers is uh Ryan Clark VA.com. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So you need to check this, those out. It's really incredible. And now we know he's got another 26 <laughs> or so coming. <laughs> right, yeah. I think I've put out, I think I've put out like, Ten to oh, okay. This year. And um, yeah, but yeah, I gotta get on it. I gotta. I haven't put anything out um since since June. So I, and it's August when we're recording this. So I gotta. I got. I got a more to share for sure. <laughs> yes, you got more to share for sure. Oh, well, we can't wait to hear about that. With how about this? I want to ask you what would people who don't know about the music scene in Harrisonburg be most surprised about? Good question. I think, I mean, there's so many different, I think maybe the variety and the breadth of talent and art here is really amazing. Um, Cause yeah, sometimes people will ask me like, how's Harrisonburg? Like what's going on? And sometimes it's hard for me to, give a good answer because again i'm like well like what i said earlier is like i have one story i have like two sets of i have two feet i don't have two sets of feet that would be cool though um <laughs> the and yeah i i do what i do but there's so many different people and so many different types of music um that is happening and being created um and shared and I, there's just a lot of interesting and interested people, um, I believe here. And yeah, Harrisonburg is a very, very unique place. And I think, um, you know, it's, that's what it is. I, that's what I've always appreciated about Harrisonburg is that it, it kind of, to me, it, it kind of goes at its own pace and like does its own thing and doesn't try to be anything. Although it might be, confused at times or often <laughs> um i don't know i just i i love it um and again i'm sure some people hate it and so that's there's room for all that um but yeah just i just um i don't know if that answers your question or if that was a yeah i like that yeah <laughs> i like that it's a bit of a i feel like it's a bit of a underground the music scene here and i i have run into people that, oh, there's a big music scene here and they're into music. How would someone like that get connected to the music scene? What what kind of suggestions could you give to people on how to connect to the music scene if they're not already and they love it? They love music. Right. How, what's the best way to go about it? Yeah, it's interesting because it's like August 2021 and I, I'm, I don't know if I've even played out this year okay. or um yeah so i would say like pre-pandemic to kind of like go downtown and like listen or um go look around um and yeah maybe just i don't know just stay curious i guess would be what i would say to anybody anywhere uh but also in harrisonburg just to stay curious and um if you see something you like 
cool. And if you don't see anything that you like, that's all right too. Like, I think that's, I think that's kind of part of um, what I've tried to do, at least like in my ideal scenario in my head here is like, if I don't see something like, I try not to get discouraged. I try to be like, all right, well, that means that there might be room to explore it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, yeah, I I would encourage people that love to consume music and experience music to, yeah, maybe try to make some or to, um, yeah, learn more about how they can um, do it and get involved. And just because I feel like everybody, no matter what, can do something creative and uh, make a little noise and shake things up for the better. Uh, maybe add to the music scene. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That could be really great. Are there some popular places? Golden Pony, I know it has a lot of music. Clementine right. does music. Are there, it's, uh, and Restless Moods, a lot of the breweries will have music artists come in. Mm-hmm. Are there, are there any other um, popular places for music? I might be missing that people in the music scene hit up a lot or or did yeah. pre-covid yeah yeah i think um yeah um again i only have i always say this but i only have one particular experience through it all um but definitely in the past there has been a huge um house show scene um and yeah just people people playing shows in basements and um putting out the donation jar and um yeah respecting people and making um spaces inclusive and uh just welcoming people into just things that they may never see or have experience i know that definitely informed um some of what i do is just being at a dark basement show seeing a band that i've never heard of that i may not even know the name of anymore but the energy from that experience i think still resonates and still sticks around um so yeah that's one thing and yeah i mean the birds are always humming so i would listen to that (laughs) sometimes i feel like when i on a day where i like want to make music and it might not be there or something i just like i just need to shut up and listen um (laughs) to yeah to to the nature to to nature the nature and i know that's getting on the the edge of um what we don't talk about on this podcast so i want to i want to stop okay yeah. <laughs> I, I, loved the, I loved the tagline though the um what was it we <laughs> we talk about everything except for hiking or non-hiking. yeah yeah it's a podcast about all things non-hiking <laughs> oh my gosh that was so funny <laughs> Right, because we already have so much hiking here. So is that is that what you mean? We don't talk about hiking on the podcast and you start getting yes. into some nature, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's okay to break the rules. Now that you've said, oh, we don't talk about it. Now people are going to want to know what you wanted to say. Right. right. Yeah. So, no, feel just... free, so feel free to expand on that. No, Ooh. this is what I'm saying. But there are so many beautiful places around Harrisburg yeah and just like in the valley in general that there's a lot of um yeah just interesting I don't know places to experience and things to see and um yeah again birds to birds to listen listen to to. yeah that's a great segue into this next question we have for you I read up on you a little bit and came across that you are into dog walks and meditation to stay grounded while working creatively. Can you expand yes. on that and speak on what that means to you and looks like for you? Absolutely. Yeah. The um, I was just on first thing this morning I did was get my dog and go on a walk. And, and yeah, even this morning I was able to write a little song like while we were on our walk and um, yeah, just for me, um it's just super it's just part of what i do and uh who i am i i started to pick up a daily meditation practice years ago um probably like probably like 6 or 7 years ago and 
you know, sometimes I fall off. Sometimes I, I don't do it um, for a day. Um, but I try to every day in the morning um, and then maybe later in the afternoon if I can, if once I kind of start to feel anxious or nervous. Um, yeah, and any other time that I feel just like overwhelmed or anxious. Um, yeah, I just try to like focus on my breathing, uh, maybe close my eyes, sit still, uh, go on a walk. Walks are very meditative and helpful for me. And yeah, that to me just bleeds into everything else that I do, whether it's creating or DJing or um, being in a relationship. Like that's super huge. It's not only as much as I want to create and like express, I have to balance that out with um, just absorbing and listening and um, just being really, cause I'm always doing so much. I just wanna be able to balance that out and and yeah, kind of stay, stay centered and stay grateful and um, go from there. I think that's a good place to start. At least for me, it has been. Yeah, I really like that. I. I had uh, someone tell me that we are human beings, not human doings. Nice. Yeah, I love that. Isn't that great? Yeah. How long do you meditate? I just started meditating. I have a Peloton app and I mm-hmm. got, I'm doing five minutes. That's <laughs> Start awesome. with five minutes. Yeah. 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 I, did one, I did a quick five minute one this morning. Um, okay. Yeah. So t- I'll try to do 15 minutes. Um, in the morning, um, sometimes it's 10, sometimes like if it's like, if it's like nine 47, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do a 13 minute meditation and then it'll be 10 o'clock when I'm done or, um, yeah. And sometimes I'll do it for longer. Um, sometimes if I have a hard time sleeping, I'll just get up and either like do some stretches or meditate. Um, so yeah, kind of like 10 minutes, 15 minutes and, um, yeah, just set a little timer on my phone. Um, and I have done some different like guided meditations and stuff like that. For the most part, it's just, I just close my eyes and focus on my, focus on my breath and let the thoughts come as they will. And then go as they will. And to, yeah, if I get, if I get lost or sidetracked, just kind of come back to my breath and yeah, it's a good, it's good because by doing so I'm able to kind of prioritize and like naturally filter out um, maybe what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my day and like my intentions. And then, yeah, I'm also able to, um, yeah, just, I think better show up for people. I feel like if I, if I can take care of me like in the morning, um, then I might be able to better serve other people. I agree with that. As another recent interview, we were talking about that and how they tell you when you travel and you're on an airplane, put oxygen mask on yourself before mm-hmm. you give it to someone else because that's how you're going to be able to be there and be present for them. And that's self care and self love. I like how you said setting intentions. I've recently was doing this audio book seven che- seven habits for seven, seven habits for self-loving people. Mm. Yeah. And the first one is, you know, in the morning in your bed, uh, you are um, focusing on awareness. So you take three deep breaths and set your intention for the day and stretch. So you're being within yourself first. Mm. And then at the end of the day, you evaluate, you know, did you meet your intention for the day and what can you learn from that? And it helps you as you're going throughout your day, when you set those intentions to stay focused. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just journaling and getting stuff out or yeah. At the end of the day, sometimes being like, what did I do today? So then you're kind of like, if you think you didn't do anything today and then you write down what you actually did, you're like, Oh, there's actually did some things today. So yeah. 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 That's really good. I know I, a lot of what can go awry is how we think, you right. know? Yeah. I'm learning a lot about cognitive distortion thinking too. 
Wow. Yeah. So, you know, some of the thoughts that go in, we can have all or nothing thinking over generalization, labeling, you wow. know, and magnification and catastrophic thinking are all very normal cognitive distortions that we all have. Yeah. But learn being able to label it and then reframe it right to a more balanced recognition of what's really happening right. can change your whole attitude and feel better about yourself yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 things are changing and as are we and like yeah we're we're just shifting and hopefully we can do what we can to shift so that yeah again we can be there for other people yeah yeah the book recommendation for the cognitive distortion thought is feeling good it's called feeling good i don't have the author's name right in front of me but we can put that in the show notes too for people cool yeah yeah i love that it will have to have more conversations later on when i see you about meditation because i just started getting into it so it's really cool to meet somebody i already know already doing it <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely a practice that has definitely yeah informed a lot of what i do and um has definitely served um me in a way yeah i think that's the other part of it is like i don't want to just meditate for 20 minutes every day if it's if it's not helping me like i don't want to make it a chore that i need to do that um yeah it becomes like dogmatic or something like that so yeah and the whole idea of it is to connect with ourself and yeah. be able to sit with our thoughts and our feelings and process yeah. them so that we can be st- staying centered and grounded more present and open to what the world has for us each day yeah yeah because sometimes it's like i'll like think to myself it's like do i need to meditate or do i just need to like go on a run or something you know like it's like i just for me it's just like i'm super super in my head sometimes and then yeah after i meditate i'm a little bit more like in my heart and like in my body and like more aware of like my whole being and mm-hmm. then yeah from there it's yeah it's super super helpful <laughs> yeah yeah connecting with ourselves then we know how to make decisions because we've identified what identified what we need and want yeah yeah it's pretty cool well we i didn't know our podcast episode was going there but i love it <laughs> yeah. yeah it's beautiful this has been really great how can people follow you on social media or elsewhere to best keep up with you ryan Sure. Yeah. I'm mostly um, on social medias and on Instagram um, at Ryan Clark, V-A, R-Y-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-V-A. And other than that, I mean, I'm on TikTok as well. Same thing. I think everything is pretty much Ryan Clark, V-A. Um, yeah. Websites, RyanClarkVA.com. And yeah, feel free to holler. Um, I like to stay as active and as corresponding as i can on socials and whatnot and um yeah i'm really appreciative of you and you inviting me on here yes this has been great laughers we will be sure to put all that information on how you can keep up with ryan and follow him in the show notes thanks again ryan this has been so fun you are a valley gem for sure i knew you were a talented dj but i'm so glad to have you on today so that we can share with the laughers the depth of your unique talents and have you educate us more on the music industry and the trends that are happening it's been great to have you Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'm really excited for what you've been up to. And I can't wait to see what else you all are creating as well. So thank you. You're welcome. Yes. And lastly, and most importantly, thanks for tuning in, Lappers. Out of all the podcasts out there, you picked us. And we think that's pretty darn special, just like you. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So check back for another uplifting episode. Come to an X2 Comedy show or let us bring a show to you. To find out more, head to x2comedy.com. Be sure to share us with a friend. Until next time, cheers.